acontece? It was you. You talk about that, but it's nothing, Jimmy. What did I bring up that? He says something about the Jimmy. You brought up ag, and then I asked about the high school, and I guess I brought up the high school portion of it. But you brought up ag. That's true. <laughs> You know, there's an asshole song by Dennis Lear, and I fucking love it. I think so. I'm an asshole. It. It's pretty fucking offensive. <laughs> Sometimes I park in the handicapped spaces while handicapped people make handicapped faces. I'm an asshole. <laughs> That's the song, shit like that. That should be your own part. You know what an alma mater is? This is why you say I suck at spelling. You don't know what the definition of words are. That should be your answer. Sorry. So 9.3 is on graphing functions. And 9.4 is on basically like advanced graphing. I'll give it a better name when we get to it. Basic way is plot points. So if I had square root of x plus one, I could make an x and a y table. And you'll see right away, this looks shitty. By plugging zero, I get square root of one, which is fine, that's one. If I stick in one, I get square root of two, which is an unending decimal thing, but approximately 1.4. If I stick in two, I get square root of three, also an unending decimal, 1.7. If I stick in three, I get square root of four, which is two. So some choices are better than others, and we'll learn how to do those in the advanced graph. Well, here you've got to go compensate for uh, the value there. But we'll see like how that ties in with the advanced graphing stuff. And then we could do one like, like I'll do called this G of X. G of X is the absolute value of two X plus one. So maybe I'll make my X, Y chart here. Doing it sideways to conserve a little bit of space. Maybe we'll do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. I stick in negative two, I get Negative four plus one is negative three, and the absolute value is three. If I stick in negative, you know what? This better graph is better to do with two x plus five. Let's do two x plus five. I want to change it retroactively. So that would change this to negative two times two plus five would be negative, absolute value of negative one, which is positive one. And if I stick in negative one, I get three. It's already a positive three when I stick it in. If I stick in zero, I get five. If I stick in one, I get seven. These are all going up by two, aren't they? A graph of this with what I have there we go left two and up one. Let's 
see if I can use a different color pin for this. Negative two, one, negative one, three, zero, five, one, seven, and two, nine. It looks like this. That's what I have. And the only parts I actually plotted were, <clears throat> I'll do in blue, make this dark. But it kind of looks like a straight line, doesn't it? So I want to extend it like that, but the red shit isn't necessarily true. Because absolute value of x makes a b. So something with the numbers I picked, don't do this justice in showing what the graph looks like. The same problem goes along up here. And we'll look at 99.4 how to address this. There's some shit that makes this a little easier to go about doing. Because, like, what numbers do I got to pick so that it works well? If you're doing a plotting of points, I'll tell you this part. If you're plotting points, set inside the weird part. equal to zero and so so like 2x plus 5 is in the absolute value function if I did 2x plus 5 equals zero I get x equals negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5 then do points on both sides of that x values for both sides of that So maybe a better choice would have been, would have been uh, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, one, and zero. I'm not gonna go through and do the whole thing, but that would have been a better choice. We should have gotten some, seen that, the, the B. And we wouldn't have really actually seen the B if we didn't do negative 2.5, because that's where it changes directions. <laughs> We'll see that in 9.4 though. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, we would call it a vertex in this. We tend to use vertex the most with parabolas, but yeah, it works there too. Then we could do one that's fucking crazy. <laughs> and does like, I don't even know where the center, or what I would do here. So I would probably just do negative, you know, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. But H of negative two, this is fucking messy. Minus one. Not too bad because I chose small number. Looks like negative three. And we can do a whole chart for this. Sometimes it's better to try to factor this. If I factored this, I would have x squared times x plus 1. And if I wanted an x plus 1 to repeat again, I would have minus 1. And that would fact pull out the x plus 1, and I'm left with the x squared minus 1. And 
Yeah, and that factors again. X squared minus one turns into X plus one, X minus one. That's the difference of squares. So I'd probably write this as X plus one squared and X minus one. Then plugging in numbers is a lot quicker than doing this. For big numbers, I can go through quicker. Like negative four seems like fucking murder up here. Or like, yeah, I don't know, negative 11. But I want to do that. But plugging that in here is fucking pretty easy. This is negative 10 squared times negative 12, which is 100 times negative 12. So negative 1,200. Whereas, I don't know 11 cubed. I feel like actually I do. I could do, I think, 11 to any power, I think. Follows the binomial formula. But, uh, this gets a little complicated. This isn't always the best way to go. So sometimes, sometimes we have to. Uh, but we will learn other strategies for graphing h of x because there's a cube in here, there's a square, there's a lot of stuff going on. I would need to pick a lot of fucking points to give that a fair graph. In fact, I'm going to type it into Desmos and show you guys what it looks like. That doesn't look that easy to figure out. But we did see this. See how it hits negative, it hits the y axis at negative one and hits the y axis at positive one? We'll eventually see how that's related to this factoring right here. That's much later. We're not doing that, any of that today. We're going to try to stick with the basic graphs. But we did have, say, graphing functions, so we need to make sure things are functions. Uh, so one way to verify functions, verifying you graph is for a function, it's called the vertical line test. And what it really boils down to is if you can draw a vertical line through your graph in at least one place, at least one x value, and that line hits the graph more than once, it's not a function. Chapter 14, like one of the last chapters we do is where we start doing all the crazy graphs. We're gonna to stick to basic graphs for chapter nine. What this means is like, let's draw a few function or a few graphs and play, is this a function? Is 
parabola. <clears throat> Something that looks a little bit like what we just did, but in a different spot. Oh, what about a circle? Let's do a circle. And I'm going to do something called the greatest integer function. We'll see this on the video I'm going to make. It's called the greatest integer function. We'll see it in 9.5. So what we're gonna do is draw a bunch of lines through and go, is there anywhere where it crosses more than once? Let me let you finish drawing this. So each of these, it looks like a staircase. The left side is a filled in dot, the right side is a hollow dot. And the hollow dot is underneath the filled in dot for the line of voting. People are still writing. You didn't bring a see through cup today. Oh, yeah, because my cup finally came in. So I don't have to use my. Nice. It's all about food. She could have had that in the regular cup, I would have never known. Slip a little vodka in it. I mean, no, it's probably, someone would probably smell it. But if you had it in a small amount, maybe not. I heard when you let you drink. I should have heard about it. Do they? Oh, on campus, just don't get oh, caught. Yeah. Right. True. You can drink anywhere you want as long as you yeah. don't get caught. Just ask the priests. No, they serve wine. What am I talking about? That's Jesus' blood. There it is. <laughs> if he's a grape. <laughs> All right. He's actually raising one. So I'm going to make a bunch of vertical lines. Does it cross, cross his graph anywhere more than once? No. So this is a function, yes. About here, we all space it out a little bit more. Does it cross more than once? So yes, it's a function. Doesn't cross anywhere over here. On the ends, it only crosses once, but in the middle, it crosses twice. So circles are not a function. And what about this? Well, it says it's the greatest energy function. I guess the fucking, I guess, look, it's you, clever girl. She said, like, maybe I shouldn't have wrote function there. Yeah, it's a, it's a function. <laughs> now, remember, we were open, so technically it's not. Doesn't have a value there. Remember when we were doing the inequalities and we had that, like, X is less than two, we didn't have two on it. So remember how we describe functions is if we stick in one X, we only want to get one Y. So like on a circle, if I stick in, like say this is, say that's X equals two. If I stick in X equals two, I get a Y value down here. Let's call it Y one. And I get a Y value up here. And so I'm getting two different Y's for the same X. That's why it's not a function. And that's why the vertical line test works. Are you ready to learn? Yes, I'm ready to learn. What is that song? It's a song, I'm not making that up. It is an old, it's an old song. Anyone need this have longer? All right. All right, so we have a bunch of these weird functions. They can be fucking crazy. So domain is pretty important. Finding the domain is pretty important for functions. 
because it gives us all the x values we can use. All possible x values that work for the graph, for the function. That's the domain, so like, we want to know where the domain doesn't have anything. <laughs> so functions really pretty much, there's only two things that can restrict the domain. Okay. No negatives under a radical. And B, no value that makes the denominator zero. Why are you smiling, Keith? You're not supposed to smile with shit like this. Are you enjoying yourself? Are we having a good time? That's good. Why should we be happy? Still making C. Jimmy stole your scene. Well, when you want Jimmy sitting there, you, uh, you, actually, you chose back there today. Yeah. I used to sit there, actually. So you have them on Do you have them? Huh? Do you have them? what? You know what? Oh, I was. They're in there? I never. Can I show them on break? No. That was Please. A lot of pencils. What if I give you an extra credit, please? Give me 10 extra credit. I give you 10 extra points. There's a lot of points in this class. 10 extra credit points is not going to make him get a fat even pass a grade. No. It's a nice little edge, though, filling that gap from 69.8 to 70 that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> like, it's not a handful of pencil. You need like two hands to hold his pencils. <laughs> Yeah. And souls. Keep it playing. All right, so let's take a look at some functions and mind the domain. What causes causes problems for the domain? Here we will do 3x over x squared plus 2x minus 8. So when we have a denominator, this can't equal zero. And rather than trying to guess and figure out what numbers work, the easiest approach is just set it equal to zero. And solve to see what values would do it. Got that many pencils in your neck. You haven't asked for a sharpener yet. Did you just carry one or did you just sharpen them all over fucking winter break? One of the two. Both. Okay, you're on. Okay, there's one out. See, when I have to actually pencil these back, that's what it's smart. That's the entire idea. What does this factor in, dude, Jimmy? That's a good spot. Keith. Uh, negative or positive, uh, positive or um, negative two. Let's check. It's always worth throwing down and taking a look. 
If I do this, I'm going to get a plus 4x and a minus 2x. So those add up to plus 2x. That's good. And then 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So that meets what we're looking for. That is correct. So that means we can do x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. And we find x equals negative 4 or x equals 2 solves this equation, which means in our big function, x cannot equal negative 4 or x cannot equal 2. I like to call these the bad juju numbers. I don't know why I have no idea what juju means. It just sounds good. It sounds like a, I don't know, like a hex, like some witch doctor's fucking casting a hex. Uh, too much fantasy. Now, x not equaling negative 4, x not equaling 2 is a handy way of writing that. Just for interval notation's sake, in interval notation's sake, to link it back to what we were doing before, it means x can be negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. It can't be negative 4, which means it can. we got to use the union sign and start up at negative four and go up to two. It can't equal two, so we do this. And when you see like interval notation and you see a union thing and it's the same thing like on both sides of the union, that tells you that X can't equal whatever that is. So I see the negative four doing it and the two doing it means X can't equal two. All right, uh, so let's look at another one. We said two things don't make it, so this happens. Uh, let's take a look at g of x equals the square root of 3 minus x. So we said this can't be negative. Another way of putting that is it's got to be greater than or equal to zero. What it can be is greater than or equal to zero. It can be a positive number or it can equal zero. So the way to find out what works here is do the same thing but set it equal to that now. So we're going to do 3 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. So how would I go about solving this? What, Jimmy? Subtract 3. So I subtract 3. And the bar of x or negative one. one. Yeah, negative one. one. It's a good one. What will I get if I do? The, the sign would have to flip to the other side. The sign has to flip. 
<laughs> See, all that worry you had about needing to practice in the qualities again, you seem to remember the hard shit. So I think you're good on quality. Could you just add in the X to the next time? It's a very, very valid approach. I'm not worried, man. You just like to worry. You're a worry. Three is greater than or equal to X. These two are the same thing. The alligator is chasing the three. Sounds like some bullshit, so let's check it. Values that are less than three, like negative 10 works, zero is less than three, two, three, but not like 3.1. That's not less than three. Do those work? Three minus negative 10 is three plus 10, so that's square root of 13. That is a number. It's not a pretty number, it's not a whole number, but it's enough. Three minus two. I wrote the wrong notation here. This would be G of negative 10. This is G of two. Square root of one, that's valid. I can even do the square root of three. Or three minus three is square root of zero. That still works. That's zero. That's one. Don't leave it as square root of one. That's being a scrub. But if I do 3.1 or even 3.0001, I get three minus 3.0001, which is the square root of negative 0 0.0001. And now I got an imaginary. So it's not a real number anymore. So that part work. That's how we find, if, if we don't have either of those problems, if there's no denominators and no square roots, i.e. like no fractions and no square roots, generally the domain is all real numbers. I can't think of a function that doesn't have that. Okay. So that's what you got to do to find the domains. You really look for where the domain isn't allowed. Values that are restricted are not allowed in the domain. You guys ready for some more fun shit? Want to make sure I'm not turning the page for a couple of people are still looking up and writing, so I assume you're still writing this. We'll wait. <clears throat> I can't believe she gave me an F minus. <laughs> still dwelling on that shit now. <laughs> that was hateful. I was so glad I transferred from there. The next year I went to El Camino, a different high school. And since I didn't get a passing grade, I had to take a PE course again. But at that point, I didn't have to choose like the freshman PE. I picked tennis. <clears throat> and I, you know, I wasn't the best of the 10, but I wasn't the worst either, which was interesting. I was always heavy, but not as heavy as I am now. I still had, you know, a little pork chop on the, the court, swinging my rabbit. It's pretty good now. All right, people look like they're done. Uh, so we will graph the following six functions after break, but these are like the six basic functions. <laughs> F of X equals X. This is called the identity function. And I'm going to graph them pretty quickly after the break. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it now. Let's just mix 9.3 and 9.4. We're adults. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Well, I think we're all adults. That's not always true with evening courses, late afternoon courses. 
Does anyone in here attend high school? Not right now. I wonder if anyone online does. <laughs> oh well. Adults can technically still attend high school too. Yeah, there's actually a lot of seniors that are adults. So. I graduated at 17. Probably. Are we fucking bragging, James? I'm just saying that. My birthday just so happens to be lined up where, oh yeah, I'm graduated at 17. But this is it like June or July or something. In October. That's the identity function. Uh, then we have our squaring function. <laughs> Guess what it looks like? What the equation is? X squared. X squared. <laughs> And if you want to recap for like what numbers work in the basic graph, uh, I recommend you watch the support course video tonight after I've uploaded it because it's assumed you know this graph. But I spent a good 30 minutes on this. An hour ago. So you can always check it out later for a recap. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to explore what f of negative x looks like. What about f of negative x? Well, it's like putting X in parentheses on both of these and plugging in the negative X. So I plug that in there. I just get, I don't need the parentheses on this one. I just get negative X. If I do the parentheses here, I actually get positive X squared. It actually ends up being the same, right? Same thing f of negative x actually equaled f of x. That's kind of cool. And up here, f of negative x looks like it equals negative f of x. Let's see if any of the other basic functions do this shit. You ready for more? So we did, I, would, I, would, I don't like the identity function. I don't like the name of it. It doesn't really indicate to the normal person what it is. Squared function tells you. Uh, what about the cubing function? What do you think that does? Cubing function is f of x equals x cubed. I'll give props to anyone that can draw that without lifting the pencil. Because I sure as hell can't. I never, like, whenever I draw a cube function, I do one half and then I do the other. Because otherwise, it's just otherwise it doesn't look right. It's just a mess. Yeah. You Knock yourself out. Okay. When you, if you watched me do it, what I did is I did this side because I can go in the same motion. And then I did this side because I keep curving the same direction. 
But if I try to do it together, it looks awkward on the graph. Like it doesn't look as good. I don't know. I guess I can do it. What are doing f of negative x here? What do we get here if I stick in negative x? So the same thing that I reversed. Which is negative x cubed. So it is reversed for opposite. It's the opposite sign is the original function. So we did split, we did the line x to the first power. We did x squared, we did x cubed. What's the next one we're gonna do? You cheat. You were here earlier. I deliberately said one, two, three, and I wanted someone to say four. And I said, no, we get lazy when we get x to the fourth. All right, so now we got the square root function. Boom. Square to x. This looks like half of a sideways parabola. Uh, and it's because it is. There's a relationship between this and x squared. And we'll be going over that later, 9.7 next week. We'll talk about inverse functions and how square root of x and x squared are inverse functions and what they do for each other's graph. What about negative x here? Well, assuming we keep the same domain, here, x had to be greater than or equal to zero. If we keep x or greater than or equal to zero here, this is imaginary. If we don't, if we don't keep the same domain, like everything else, we were able to keep the same domain. <laughs> we change the domain to match the new thing, then x has to be less than or equal to zero. And it does kind of flip it. And it does it like that. But no real relation to the original f of x, like the other ones back. Might I have another? Yes, you may. Let's do another. Really what? No, really with me. I know, I wouldn't say that. Absolute value function is pretty good. It's the only one that actually has a point. 
Every other graph has been curved right there. This has a point, and it's called a cusp. There's a fun word for you. What about f of negative x here? Absolute value of negative x is just x, right? Which is actually the same thing as absolute value of positive x. So again, we have f of negative x equals positive f of x. Here, we add that on x squared. And I'll do my last one, but not least on another page. Ah, why bother? You're doing good. Fit it on one page. We have our reciprocal function. F of x equals one over x. If you watch the video we, for the last class, we spent a good while on this little one. If I do f of negative x here. I get 1 over negative x, which is the same thing as putting the negative out front which is the same thing as saying negative f of x. All right, let's take a five minute break there. Okay, we look at six functions. f of x equals x, and we saw that f of negative x was negative f of x. We had x squared. Actually, I'm going to do all the ones that had the, these are all in the f of negative x equals negative x category, negative f of x category. And we had 1 over squared x was in, or not squared x, 1 over root x was in there. These are called odd functions. If you stick in negative x and you get the original function back just negative, it's called an odd function. These are symmetrical about the origin. It acts as a mirror, a single point like looking through a drop of water. I'll show you later on this one real quick, how symmetry about the origin works. Because it's fucking not intuitive. I can't just draw a line and then reflect it across. So draw a line through the origin, make it a straight line, any straight line. This is about your use of the line earlier triggered this, Davis. I like it. If I go this distance from the center, the origin, like let's say that's a distance D, 
I can go a distance D the exact other direction, distance D the other direction, and hit the graph. So it looks kind of weird. <clears throat> and I could do like way up here, and I go the exact opposite direction, and it's the same. So it's not the same distance everywhere, but opposite directions will get you the same distance to the thing. This is not really helpful in terms of graphing. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to do this arrow thing and it's like not helpful in graphing, whereas the next one is. So we had for the other ones, f of x equals x squared and f of x was the absolute value of x. Square root didn't apply in this one. We had f of negative x just equal to f of x. These are called even functions. And they are symmetrical around the y-axis. The y-axis acts like a mirror. So part of the graph of the parabola is that. The other part of the graph of the parabola is that. It's literally like uh, reflecting. Like if I folded this page in half, the lines would overlap if I folded over the y-axis. Here it's like the same distance D there, if I did the graph well. D, D. <clears throat> That's symmetrical about the y-axis. And that's called the even functions. <clears throat> even functions are any of them where f of x equals x to the n, and n is an even number. The odd function one, the property there is f of x equals x to the n, and n is odd. Or any combination of them that at least stays same. Is even. Because all the exponents are even. I can even have a one, because plus one is like having x to the zero, which isn't, it's closer to an even number than an odd number. Uh, I could do x to the seventh plus x to the fifth plus x cubed plus x, and that's an odd function. <clears throat> And although you don't need it in this semester, I know Davis has probably seen this before. He's going to fucking ask me at some point. Cosine of x is an even function. This is a trick thing, math 54. You're going to see this. And you're going to see that sine x is odd. You don't need that little tidbit right now, but I do. It's nice to go. Where where is it? Little things like this is an obscure thing. Where does it show up? So the trick. It shows up in your next class. Well, uh, Tangents neither. Any other combination is neither. So like f of x equals x to the fourth plus x cubed is neither even nor odd. OK. 
can't have a mix. And it's only helpful when you're doing that symmetry stuff. Does it have anything to do with how we reduce these things? What? So in that in that function, we could reduce that to x cubed times x plus one. I was just thinking about the ways we could. I, I can't do this as x cubed times x plus one. Not not those. The, the one you just said. Uh, this one. So I mean, the fact that if the fact that you could reduce that to. I don't know that it has anything. I, I, I could have done x to the fourth plus, I could have done x cubed plus one, and they're mixed. And so it's not odd or even there. Uh, it's more along the lines as one is even, one is odd. Don't overthink it. <laughs> I know it's nice to make connections and shit sometimes, but sometimes there's just nothing there. Every once in a while, you see someone that looks like they're really deep in thought, you know. You're like, that's a, some why they're thinking of some good shit. Nope, they're just fucking spaced out. Mm -hmm. The lights are on, but no one's on. That's right. All right, so let me give you guys a practice uh, finding odd or even. This will show up sure in the homework. <clears throat> odd or even. And I recommend doing the whole sticking in negative x. I realize Alex has been being a little bit of a bitch. Uh, part of it, it has to do with, like it just randomly, it feels like it was randomly gave you a uh, knowledge check. It was supposed to be after 9.1. There's uh, like after every couple of weeks, there's supposed to be a small knowledge check with only a few questions to go, do you remember shit that you've done previously? And just like help keep your memory fresh basically. Uh, but we, I had to get an extension on 9.1, which didn't change the official due date, but just allowed students to sit submit for a week later. And it didn't change the fucking module, the knowledge check date for fucking, because Alex is a bitch. 
And so like, sorry, I can't fix that. I am trying to, I'm gonna look at it this weekend, trying to get at least the dates to match up better. Like I, I went through and did an overhaul of everything on Alex that we haven't done yet, future stuff to try to break it up better. <clears throat> and uh, it's not showing it in Canvas. So I'm gonna see if like, if I delete everything in Canvas and say upload again, maybe we'll fucking fix it. That's my hope. Yeah. Yeah, Don't rely on Canvas for shit, for the homework. Just click on, go to Alex, click on basically any fucking homework assignment that you have access to. It'll take you to Alex and give you the problems you need to do. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? I stick in, what did what'd you guys get for this? Is this odd or even? Does anyone else think it's odd? Does anyone think it's even? All right. That is up. What about this one? I'll write it down like y'all didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else get even? Anyone get odd? Anyone do this? Even you and I are using. Let's check. This one is negative f of x. This is actually odd. <clears throat> Even oh. All right, do each of X. When I ask, no one's done talking, and, you know, clearly I'm going too fast on that part. Tacos tonight. Black and chicken tacos. Oh, they're so good. Do that shit on my own. Well, it's just regular chicken diced up, and I do We had tried Tyson's black and chicken breast. <clears throat> like they had them in the store at one point, and then we got them, and we're like, oh my God, this shit's great. If I can chop it up, throw it in some tacos. And we went to buy more and can't find it fucking anywhere. So I'm like, well, it's just spices. I must be able to reproduce this. I make it close enough that it fucking is delicious. Yeah, I don't think it's exactly the same, but it, <laughs> you look at uh, look up blackened seasoning and it's a lot of Cajun spices. So well, I'm gotta go home, chop up, dice up a chicken breast. Spritz it with a little bit of olive oil and then uh, cover in the season, air fry that mug bucket for 12 minutes. Ah, tonight. You say you cured chicken, some other stuff in there sometimes. Right. So I mean, we, we go and use some of the chicken broth that was with the counter region. We go to take the plant, boil it. Huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
What is this one? Odd. Anyone else get odd? Is anyone else not? Is anyone not following what we're doing here? We're plugging in the and we're adding and we're seeing what what happens when we deal with the processes, and we're going to try to compare it to the original. In this case, it's the original, which means it's even. Or Davis, he's just over two right now. So you learn how about that decision. So we're afraid man do wrong. Afraid of what? Being judged by them? Nah, not judged by me? Also not. What are you afraid of then? Being wrong. <laughs> Being judged by God. Judging myself. Yeah. yeah. Go. So but you're gonna be wrong or right whether you say it out loud. Yeah. So that's not gonna deal with you judging yourself. You're, that's gonna happen anyway. The only way to avoid that is just not do anything. That's the coward's way out. Don't pull the coward's way out. Don't do that. It's okay to not talk. All right. Uh, let's talk about doing some more stuff with graphs. So we looked at the basic functions of graphs. So we saw f of x equaled x squared, we had a nice little graph that looked like this. If I do f of x equals x squared plus one, if you actually go through the table, it shifts everything up one. The entire graph moves up one. And if I do f of x equals x squared minus, I don't know, six. I guess I should give myself more blue. We go down six. So it's taken the blue graph and moved it down six. The numbers basically the same thing as B in the slope or in the slope. It's, it's, it's similar, but that's not always the case. When we combine it with other shit, I don't want it. It's not the case when we combine it with other shit. It's not always the intercept, but we can generalize it. If we say f of x plus k, if k is greater than zero, it's up k. If k is less than zero, it's down. So my base graph was f of x plus k plus one, we went up one. We could do this with absolute value of x. Absolute value of x will also move up plus k, or it moves down with negative k. They all do it, but it's easiest to see with some of these functions over others. Isn't, isn't there a, a shortcut as well with the absolute value, kind of like a stair? To if, if you had a um, like a, 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 a like that, like, like x something like. Like x squared minus like four and then uh, parentheses and then like plus three, right? We can just, just when we have stuff like that, I'm getting there. Oh, I'm doing a piece at a time. I'm like, where's he going with this? I know where you're going with this. All right, so what if we had like so like 
f of x equals absolute value of x. Uh, we know what that looks like. It's that. So if I say f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2, like that, the graph has moved up to. What if I say it's plus 2 on the inside? You'd want to think it goes the same direction. If I stick in x equals 0, <clears throat> what value do I get? 2. So if I stick in x equals 0, let's do this in red real quick. If I stick x equals 0, I get 2, which gives me that point. If I stick in x equals 2, what do I get? 4. Well, uh, okay, well, let's see if it's doing something. Let's go to the left. If I stick in x equals negative 2, what do I get? I get 0, right? What about x equals negative 4? I get negative 2, but it's on the inside of the absolute value. That goes to positive 2. So it has moved it left to. <clears throat> so it's tricky. If we do x minus 3 on the inside, what do you think happens with this? This will go right 3, yeah. We'll have it over here. So it's just corresponding to wherever the x value makes it zero. That's the best way to look at it. A lot of students try to, and it works, memorize it as going the other direction of what it says. So it says plus two, go negative two. And negative two left. It says minus three, go plus three. A better way of looking at this is figure out where that center is zero. So set, we got f of x equals x plus 2 and absolute value. Do x plus 2 equals 0, I get x equals negative 2. That's going to be the center of my graph. Whereas when we just had f of x equals absolute value of x, the center was x equals 0. In all the graphs, the original one, generally when the basic graphs, center is considered x equals zero. So if I generalize this, if I have x minus h, it goes right h. I'm going to have x plus h, I go up h. This works on any of our basic graphs. These are called translations or shifts. I'm going to give two for you to try. First one's easier than the second. f of x equals x squared minus 2. And then try g of x equals that will keep the same function. I'm going to say x plus 2 squared minus 1.
and try to use the, the, the rules we just did in the translations and knowing what the regular graph looked like. I strongly encourage you, if you're not doing this right now, if you're playing on your phone or something, do this. There's a point for the in-class practice. <clears throat> it gives you some practice while you have a chance. To, it's easier to make a mistake there. You go home, you fuck up, you're like, there's no David there. This is a penalty free chance to make mistakes and learn from it. Yeah. For the second um, equation, should we actually combine the dance plus two into its other form, quadratic form? No. Maybe as is. Use it like the primitive things we were doing here. Yes, this is a very straightforward graph. If you start working, moving shit around, it's less like I would just say go back to this. What happens with the first one? It's just down to, right? What happens with this one? Left two down one. Left two down one is correct. So my vertex, which we'll talk about later, is there. How would you make the table graph? How would make a table graph for the first one? So, if you want to make a table, like if you stick in zero, what do we get? You literally write it in the equation, and now you don't have any letters left. G of zero would be zero plus two squared minus one which is four minus one, which is three. So you gotta go through and do this for each of them. Pain in the ass. You strongly discourage tables on this. Step in this section is gonna want you to do these, these shifts or these translations. The graph gets a lot fucking easier and quicker. Oh, you gotta plot this out. You never know exactly like, do I have my curves in the right spot and everything like that? Here, it's just, the same shape, just moved. It's almost like having the graph on something below and having a transparency and just fucking moving around. I bet this was easier to teach when we did transparency. 
I don't do that anymore. All right, ready for a little bit more? So we're gonna talk about reflections. We already talked about one. If f of negative x equaled uh, f of x, this reflected across the y-axis. And these were the even functions. So absolute value, I just treat this as a mirror and I go like, if I fold it in half, what would it look like? The line would look like that, assuming I'm freehanding as well. You know what I mean? Reflections across the y-axis look similar to this f of negative x thing, but they're not. So reflections across x-axis are when we just do y equals negative f of x. This is not related to the f of negative x equals negative f of x. Not the same thing, don't, don't compare. For example, here, if f of x equals x squared, we know what that looks like. We've drawn it a few times. If I do f of x equals negative x squared, without parentheses, just put a negative sign in front of it, this just reflects it over the x-axis. Does that make sense? Yes. So like having a negative sign in front of the, the variable with the biggest exponent makes the graph flip over basically. Oh, there's more to it if there's more than one variable. Yeah, like the negative outside Yes, this is very much on the outside. This is like negative x squared like that, negative f of x. So we're not, it does not see it. It's not similar to plugging in the negative x on the inside. Want to make sure you're not doing that there. So what does uh, y equals negative absolute value of x look like? Go ahead and graph that. So what's the regular absolute value of x look like? Not a parabola, but it's just a b. So I'm doing this one in pencil. That's the regular one. So negative absolute value of x, whatever, like I'm just going to reflect it across the axis. And we'll have this. Thank you. 
as soon as the absolute value bars, then uh, we get a negative x. So but the, the negative is on the outside of the absolute value. So we, we apply it afterwards. So the absolute value of x is always the positive stuff. And now we're slapping a negative on the answer. So it just pushes everything down in the negative numbers. Does that make sense? Did that explanation now? So you're literally like if you did the table, you're like applying the negative after for the base graphs. We'll talk about putting it all together in a second, like all of this. The next concept is called dilation, but it's probably better known as stretching or shrinking. And it's when we have a multiplier on f of x. So like, let's do y equals x squared versus y equals 2x squared. God, that looks like shit. Oh, well, that's where we're going. So this is going to be my y equals x squared one. <clears throat> and y equals 2x squared, I'll do in blue. Every y value is double. So like if this goes up, if this is y equals two, then up here is y equals four. If this was y equals eight, up there is y equals 16. This one's a little harder to do without just doing a little table first, but it is a good, good to know what to expect. If we did y equals one half x squared, Everything's half the height, which makes it lower. And this would look a lot better if I had graphs and should have, maybe I should have done this on Desmos, but then I can't scan it. So like, while the blue is up double, the red, we cut it in half, this would be down to one. By one equals y. And we had y equals eight normally, rather than doubling it, like this one would have been up to 16. We cut it in half and it's down to four. So like this stretching is like when it gets higher. So stretching is when it gets taller and shrinking is when it gets flatter. The stretching is when C is greater than one. With the Y equals C times F of X, C is greater than one. The shrinking is not less than one by itself, it's C is between zero and one. So it's a fraction. So 
So like, what if we did, so you try f of x equals two square root of x, and I'll draw the base one. I'll even use coordinates. One, one, zero, zero, four, two. That is f of x equals square root of x. So the two in front doubles all the y's. So zero, zero, well, doubling the y doesn't do shit. But I double the y on one, one, I get one, two. And if I double the y on four, two, I need to make my graph a little taller. I get four, four. So this is two squared X. Unlike the other things we did, like when we did like the plus K and moved everything up one, here everything isn't moved the same amount. You actually have to do like a multiplier, which sucks. It's much easier to just grab the graph and shift it. So, doing it all together. Let's say we want, we had f of x equals negative two times x minus three squared plus four. This has got a little bit added. Yeah. So, steps, good steps. Start with x squared. And then a do or apply the two x two part. Make it two x squared. Then apply the negative. So flip it. Then shift by three shift. Is that left three or right three? Right. 
That's right three. Is that up four or down four? Up four, sorry. Up four. So sometimes this is a little bit easier in pencil. <clears throat> I'm gonna be going up, so I maybe need a little bit more room on the top part of my graph here. So I don't know if you guys can see the pencil, but I'm gonna try it. Does that show? Oh, it's just not bad. It's not bad. Can you see it, Davis? Okay. You're shaking your head now. Just checking. So that's my just x squared. So my 2x squared moves all the points twice as high. So this 4 goes up to 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8, it comes up to here. So we have it a little bit tighter. So that's 2x squared. We apply the negative which flips it below and I didn't give a lot of room to show the <clears throat> these points reflected but this one dropping down I was one two now it's one negative two. And then I'm going to shift right three and up four, which means this point goes up three, right four. Looks like I'm going to need some more black lines. This one goes up three, right four. And I'm going to use a little bit of symmetry here. Uh, this one right here was 2, 8. So down below, it's 2, negative 8. And if I move it right 3 and up 4, I'm really adding this to this. I'm going to get 5, negative 4. Why do I have, am I off here? Yeah. I am off by one, son of a bitch. There's more, uh, I need a negative four there. Let's put one down here. So that's the right half. And the center is down the middle. <clears throat> so I can use a little bit of symmetry and do the left half. Or I could just take each of the other points and move them by three and four. Here I took advantage of symmetry to do the rest of the graph. Not the most fun fucking thing. Not bad until we did the two. Believe it or not, this negative three, this four, even the minus sign isn't too bad. It's applying this fucking two that just makes it like, sorry, man. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. There are problems on the homework that I have. Oh, where did you get the, the A and the negative three? So the original, this point right here is 2, 4. So when I doubled the y value, oh, right. so double y. It's a good question. I'm glad you asked.
if that helps you doing that as you're doing it, write down the plots of the points, because then you, it's a little bit easier to see applying the double, like the four goes to the eight. And when you want to shift right three, the X is changing. And when you want to shift the Y, the Y is changing, you just add the shit to it, like I did here. We're at fucking five o'clock. It's a four day weekend. If you have classes on Friday or Monday, there are no classes. I will be at the Mesa Center by Celia on Saturday from 9 to 12. Uh, I'll be there. Okay. Other than that, get the fuck out. Wait, wait. Does anybody want to have a study room for the club? Yeah, some people are going to take it from the four day weekend. Yeah, Keith's been coming. You too. I'll see you Saturday. Good job. Have a good one.